pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please, Chris. Ray Solomon? Here. Glenn Conklin? Present. Scott Dyke? Here. John Brashe? Here. Darrell Jefferson? Here. Claudia Gazal? Here. Tina Oberlin? Present. Mark Sapiti? Here. Nate Elbert? Here. And Joe Kubo? Here. Thank you. Okay, you have before you the minutes of the City Council meeting held on June 5th, 2023. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Gazal, seconded by Alderman Jefferson for the approval of the minutes of the June 5th, 2023 Crest Hill City Council meeting. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. John Vache? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. And Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, I would ask for council's concurrence to deviate on uh, two items this evening um, from the agenda. The first one will be under the mayor's report, number 14 on your list. Uh, this will be for the American Italian Cultural Society who will be having their annual Festa Italiana on Friday, August 11th, Saturday, August 12th, and Sunday, August 23rd. It has been our tradition for many, many years here to waive the liquor license fees, the signs, signs and permits fees, and uh, for the ability for the parade and the road closure on Sunday for the mass and the parade throughout the, uh, <coughs> the neighborhood on August 13th. So I would ask first for uh, an approval, and we did discuss this last Monday night at our work session. I would ask for a motion to approve a uh, waiver of the permit fee for the alcohol on Friday, August 11th, Saturday, August 12th, and Sunday, August 23rd. So moved is presented. Second. We have a motion by all the person over and seconded by all the women Gazal for the waiver of the uh, liquor license fee for the uh, American Italian Club for the Festa Italiana. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? <coughs> yes. Mark Sapiti? Abstain. Nate Albert? Abstain. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. And John Rashe? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, I would ask for a waiver of the all waiver permit fees associated with signage for Festa Italiana. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alder Wilma Gazal, seconded by Alder Person Oberlin for the waiver of the permit fees in regards to signage for the festival. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Mark Sapiti? Abstain. Nate Albert? Abstain. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claude Gazal? Yes. And Tina Oberlin? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. And the last one I would ask for approval for the uh, road closure and the use of the police officer uh, to lead the parade for the uh, the Sunday ceremony after the mass throughout the neighborhood motion would be in order. So moved is presented. Second. We have motion by all the person <coughs> over, second by all the women Gazal for the waiver of the uh, fee of the police officer for the parade and for the road closure throughout the neighborhood. Questions or comments? <coughs> Roll call please. Nate Albert. Abstain. Joe Kubal. Yes. Scott Dyke. Yes. John Brashe. Yes. Darrell Jefferson. Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. And Mark Sapiti? Abstain. Motion carries, thank you. Okay, we do have uh, Christina Hayden and Dan Brandolino here from the American Italian Cultural Society. They are the chairman and chairwoman of the FESTA this year, so I would invite them to the podium if you'd like to make any uh, additional comments in regards to music, entertainment, uh, food, hours. It's all yours. No, can always. Sandwiches, Italian combo sandwiches, 
we hold an adult mapatory, which is a Friday ravioli. And then this year we have a roast zucchini, which is um, a new item, very traditional to our region in Italy, lamb on a stick, and that's gonna be for a limited time, only for a couple hours throughout the day. And then we'll have gelato, cannoli, and tiramisu. Um, and then on Saturday we will have speaking music around noon, Um, and then it is in honor of Maria della Sinta. And then 12.30, we will have Carmela Zacconi. 2.30 is the pasta eating contest, and adults are welcome to do that too. Uh, 3 p.m. is the accordion concert. And then 3.30, we'll have Diva and George. And then 6 p.m., we will have Strung Out. It's a lot of fun. There's lots of activities for kids to do, face paint and balloon activities, and. Lots of food, <laughs> maybe lots of fun, and raffles. So. We appreciate you guys, it's been 23 years now we're doing this. Uh, we've won Will County's Best Fest for seven years in a row, but obviously without your guys' help, we couldn't be there, so we appreciate it. Uh, I don't know, other than that, I think things are pretty good, so thanks for all the help, we look forward to it. Thank you. Uh, one question, when you did the liquor license, I think you, you said Sunday, August 20th, Third versus thirteenth. Uh -huh. You might have said that. Did anyone catch that or it's no? Thirteenth and there. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I may have. Okay. Eleven, twelve, thirteen. Eleven, twelve, okay. thirteen. Right. You said twenty third. I said, wait a second. Not <laughs> My fault. Well, I'm moving it next week. Yeah. Down the if you want for the thirty here. If you want to come back at the first meeting in August for kind of promotion, also for the festa, okay. you're more than welcome to. Also, just give awesome. me a call, and I, you've always done a great job. The club has done a great job over all these years, so we expect the same thing this year. Good. Thank you guys for everything, so thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you. Good luck. Thank you. All right, I would also ask to deviate to a uh, portion of the police chief, number 13, approval of police record supervisor salary. I'll turn it over to our police chief, Ed Clark. Evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> this evening I have before you a request to approve the uh, police record supervisor position at $70,000 per year. Uh, we spoke uh, at length on this issue. Um, and uh, I would like to thank uh, Timmy Tucker, um, uh, Lindsey Cabay, and uh, Ryan Dobsick for kind of putting the process together, and uh, they did a fine job on that. Uh, we had some great candidates, um, but this evening I bring before you Lisa Kickert, who comes from, from the uh, Sheriff's Department, approximately 13 years there, the last uh, approximately five as a record supervisor. Uh, before that, she was also a dispatcher for the Sheriff's Office. Uh, but this evening, I have before you the approval of the salary set at seventy thousand per year. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Gazal, seconded by Alderperson Overlin, for the approval of the police record supervisor Lisa Kickert. Um, the salary of seventy thousand dollars per year. Questions or comments? For roll call, please. Joe Kubal. Yes. Scott Dyke. Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Slada Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. Mark Cipede? Yes. And Nate Elbert? Yes. Motion carries, thank you. So I probably should have told her that she's going to come up here and say <laughs> point. But uh, we're very excited to have her. She's got a great attitude. I think that uh, she's going to do a lot of good things for us. She's got her work cut out for her. But uh, I'm, I'm really happy to bring her aboard and, uh, and uh, help kind of get things moving in the records department. Timmy was uh, big shoes as we all know to fill, but I think she's very capable to fill those shoes. So I have bring before you, Lisa Kicker, if you just want to say a few words. Um, you have a beautiful building here. I haven't been here yet. So Thank you. I'm pretty excited to uh, be part of the opening. I guess you're pretty new, so um, I know I've heard that I have very big shoes to fill. I'm excited about doing so. Um, I look forward to, to working with the department. So I thank you so much. Well, we welcome you to the city of Crest Hill. Thank you. I and I will it. open it up for any comments or questions from city council. Well, I would like to welcome you as well. And yes, you have big shoes to fill, but you know, you just wear the ones you have and do what you can with them. Appreciate that. <laughs> Thanks. Welcome to the city of Crest Hill. Wish you a long term with us. And Thank you. If you need any help, you reach out to. You have good leaders behind you right there, a lot of the police. It's been great so far. I'm excited. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
Uh, I'd like to just say welcome to the city of Crest Hill. Looking forward to having you be here a long time. Thank you. Congratulations on a promotion. Thank you. Hope you a long time. Got to be here for 30 years now. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> welcome to the city. Glad to see you here and hopefully have a long career with us and stay with the city a long time. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Welcome, Lisa, and uh, I want to hope that you have uh, many years here, and I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Welcome aboard, Lisa. Thank you. Appreciate Welcome it. to Cresto, Lisa. Thank you so much. Very kind. Okay. Congratulations, Lisa. Thanks. Look forward to working with you. Me too. Appreciate it. All right. Have a Thanks. good night. Okay. Back to the uh, agenda with our city attorney, Mike Steff. Good evening, Mike. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. I have one uh, agenda item under city attorney, although I think I'm going to be fielding some of the others uh, in Maura's absence. But uh, uh, the item I have is the approval of a memorandum of understanding between the city of Crest Hill, Officer Ryan Tetlow, and the uh, Metropolitan Alliance of Police No. 15. Uh, this was tabled. Changes were actually not that substantive. It was just to clarify how the uh, payments have been made through uh, through CCMSI, uh, and then we also added that any extension of the agreement would require uh, City Council uh, further City Council Act. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Dyke, seconded by Alderman Bershay for the approval of a memorandum of understanding between the City of Crest Hill, Officer Ryan Tetlow, and Metropolitan Alliance of Police, <coughs> police Number 15. Questions or comments of the motion? Roll call, please. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazzalf? Yes. Ken Overland? No. Mark Stapedi? Yes. Nate Albert? No. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Bershay? Yes. Motion carried, thank you. Uh, that's all I have under my agenda items for the moment. I'm happy to entertain any questions you might have. Any questions of city attorney? Okay, thanks Mike. Um, moving on to Public Works Department, our Director of Public Works, Mark Seifer. Good evening, Mark. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, I have no agenda items on the agenda this evening. Uh, but with this being my last meeting, I did want to take uh, the time to thank a few people. Um, I just want to thank everyone who supported me and my family throughout these last 15 years that I've been here. Um, this decision to leave was not one that I took very lightly. But at this time, this is what is, what is best for myself and my family. Um, I want to thank all the staff who I've worked with uh, since I was summer help uh, at 18 years old, uh, all the way through up until today. Uh, those people who are lifelong friends, and uh, I will, will not forget any of them. Um, but just want to say thank you to everyone who's been there for me throughout these entire years, uh, department heads, staff, uh, everyone in the city. Uh, I've made a lot of great friendships, uh, worked with a lot of great residents, a lot of great people. So uh, I just want to thank everyone. That's all I have. Well, Mark, I want to thank you for your commitment and your dedication to the city of Crest Hill for the last 15 years. Um, I think we had a great friendship all along the way. I want to wish you good health, good luck with all your future endeavors, and you are always welcome back in this building. Thank you. Anybody else? Well, I would like to wish you well as well, Mark. Um, and I did have a message from the dude. In case he doesn't get to see you, he wants to make sure to send his best wishes for your happy future for you as well, okay? Thank you. I want to wish you the best, Mark. Um, I feel like you and I, we go way back. And when I say that, it's like you said, I saw you growing in the city. I had big hopes for you. Um, I know from myself, I have supported you all the way. And um, it is disappointing to see you leaving. It's disappointing that you're, uh, you're feeling the way you're feeling. Um, but I know the majority of the council have supported you. We, we believed in you. I believed in you, and you know that, and you cannot deny that. 
and I'm going to say that publicly, and I told you that before. Um, I was backing you up all the way, and to see you leaving like that, it is, it is disappointing. <coughs> but in the end, it's what works for you. I hope you see a bright future, you know, and, but this is always, like I said to you the other day, this is your home, you know. It is your home, and it's, it's sad to see how it's ending. I want to thank you for all your years here. It's always good to see employees start from the bottom and work their way up like you have. That's a good thing, you know, it makes the city proud, not only the residents, but us on council to see someone do that. So just want to thank you again. Uh, sorry to see you go. And before you go, just one question. Um, our fire hydrants, the blue, it's starting to fade. And didn't we have that done by a couple different contractors? And do you know which ones did what or what? Just one contractor throughout the entire through the different six years of the, through the six years of the program so far. Is there any kind of warranty on that paint? Six years. Six years. So Is some of it past the six years? Of course. Yeah. Oh, okay. It Just was it, curious. It doesn't, it doesn't help with the amount of road salt that other agencies use on some of these high, some of these areas. Uh, road salt's extremely corrosive. So as you see, the hydrants that are closer to main roads, like to our Route 30, Broadway, those ones take the biggest abuse because the amount of uh, salt that's used by some other agencies. I was just curious, seeing a lot of them, some of them are really faded and pale blue and yep. was just wondering. Yep. Thank you. Thanks well, Mark, I want to thank you for your, your service to the city, and I want to wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. Thanks, Mark, for all you've done for all the years. And the blue paint of fire plugs, the sun eats the paint off. It turns white, so that's why it doesn't last. So that's happened to all the plugs around the town. But congratulations anyway, wherever you're going. Thanks for the 15 years. Uh, I'd like to just say thank you for your service, Mark. Uh, haven't had a chance to really uh, know you <coughs> on a personal level, but professionally, uh, I think you're one of the best in this state at what you do. Mark, I think right there, uh, Alderman Dyke asking you a question, you're still following up with the answers. That shows your commitment that you've shown to this city for more than 15 years, because even as a resident, you showed commitment to the city. And I'm certainly gonna miss you, and I'm probably gonna get emotional like I always do, but uh, glad you said it, you're Mr. Crestill. So really gonna miss you. Mark, thank you for your service and best of luck to you and your family. Okay, any other questions? Thanks, Mark. Uh, moving on, City Engineer, Ron Wiedemann. Good evening, Ron. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, got quite a few items tonight. <clears throat> um, the first one has to do with the, this year's crack control program. As the memo states, our contractor from last year is holding his pricing. Um, with that, it allowed us to kind of move, move forward and um, stay within budget. This year, we broke it into two separate contracts due to the timing of the work for the contractor and just for our own internal budgetary purposes. Um, this year, we did add some additional requirements that weren't in last year's contract of like no parking signs being installed in letters out to the residents. And the biggest one is that this year he's going to use a method that will collect 85 to 90 percent of all of the material. That was one of the biggest complaints last year is when he blows out all the stuff out of, out of the joints and it's all over the, the street. So this method will basically it's going to vacuum it up as he's going along. So you won't have that. Um, the streets, the two contracts, contract A. Uh, locations are in wards three and four, where contract B is in, lo uh, in ward one. Um, so I'm looking for a motion to first execute the contract with Patriot payment markings in the amount of $15,992.50 for the 2023-24 MFG Crack Control Program Contract A. So moved so is presented. Second. We have a motion by Alder Personal and a second by Alder Lynn Albert to execute the contract with Patriot pavement markings for the 2023-2024 MFD crack control program. Questions or comments? Roll call. 
Scott Dyke. Yes. John Brashe. Yes. Carol Jefferson. Yes. Claudia Gonzalez. Yes. Tina Oberlin. Yes. Mark Zapiti. Yes. Nate Albert. Yes. And Joe Kubal. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And the second, I'm looking for a second motion to execute the contract of Patriot Pain and Marking in the amount of 19000 for the 2023-24 MFT crack control program as referred to as contract B. So moved. Second. Second. Says 18. Second. Oh. We have a motion by Alderman Dyke, second, second by Alderman Jefferson to execute contract B for the 2023-2024 MFT crack control program in the amount of $19,000. Questions or comments? Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Craig? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item I have on the agenda that was previously presented to you is to approve a change order number one for the water main relocation work at the Hillcrest Shopping Center due to the construction of the new recruiting building, which will increase the city's share of work for construction to $365,534.90. So moved, <coughs> presented. We have a motion by Alder First Noble and seconded by Alderman Jefferson. Move change order number one with Construction Solutions of Illinois for, for water main relocation work at the Hillcrest Shopping Center. The amount of $365,534. Questions or comments? Roll call. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The next item I have, as again previously presented, to approve change order number one for the Cheney at Center Water Main and Roadway Rehabilitation Project, which will increase the contract amount to $3,535,000. One hundred thirty-three dollars and thirty cents. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion by Alderman Dyke, seconded by Alderman Jefferson, to approve change order number one with the B3 companies for the Cheney and Center Water Main Roadway Rehabilitation Project, which will increase the contract amount to three million five hundred thirty-five thousand one hundred thirty-three dollars. Questions or comments? Is that the one we're on, Ron? Yes. I'm sorry, yeah. What? Was, was that the one we were on, correct? You have to change order for Cheney and Center? Yes. Yes. Okay. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Rochelle? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. The last item that I have on the agenda is the IGA for the Route 66 monument as previously discussed. Since the May 22nd workshop where this was brought up, we have reached out to Lucky Brothers and we're waiting for their response back on the location. Um, obviously, if that's if we get the sign in prior to that time, we'll put it here at City Hall, while we either finalize that location or find another one. Um, the agreement was reviewed by both myself and the city attorney. Um, all of my comments were addressed um, I'll let the city attorney comment on the indemnity clause that's currently in the contract. Yeah, so all of the changes that I suggested have been uh, approved. All of uh, Ron's concerns have been addressed. So the only remaining item is I had uh, recommended that the indemnity clause be removed. Uh, the Convention Bureau's attorney uh, insisted on it remaining in. As I discussed with uh, all of you individually uh, uh, prior to the meeting, I think it's a minimal risk, although I can't say that there is no risk. Uh, quite honestly, I would be recommending that if I were on the city's side, on the other side of the agreement. So uh, I just didn't feel comfortable committing the city to it since it's not a zero risk. But um, so with that being said, um, uh, the agreement other than that is uh, approved or uh, okay by me. So moved as presented. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Albert, seconded by Alderman Jefferson to execute the Route 66 Community Monuments Memorandum of Understanding Agreement between the Heritage Quarter Convention and visit the Visitors Bureau and the City of Crest Hill. Questions or comments? Roll call. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. That is all I have, Mayor, unless there's some additional questions by Council. 
Well, there is a resolution. There is a resolution yeah. also. Oh, I'm sorry. I go back. 6B. So I'm looking for a, a motion to approve the resolution. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alder Personal and seconded by Alderman Albert to approve a resolution approving a memorandum of understanding by and between the City of Crest Hill, Will County, Illinois, and Heritage Corridor Convention and Visitor Bureau, an Illinois not for profit corporation. Questions or comments? Roll call. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claude Gazal? Yes. And Tina Alderman? Yes. Motion carries resolution 1777. Hey, Ron, can you just make sure that some of the uh, crack filling projects and stuff are listed on the website and Facebook so residents They're are already there. listed. They've been listed about two weeks now. Okay, They've thank you. They've been up there. And we put, a we put a list of all the locations on the website also. Great, thanks. I want to thank you, Ron, for taking care of the uh, cross and getting a hold of the railroad there on Oakland Avenue. Yeah, I think Mark, they reached out to, I believe, Mark oh, first. Okay. Um, we are working. We did reach out to them today. They've got to get a detour approved for that. But otherwise, yeah, they should be getting started in a couple days. Well, thanks to both of you then. Okay, thanks, Ron. Uh, moving on to community development. Um, more cannot be here tonight. I know I'm turning it over to our city attorney, Mike Stipp. Uh, we have several items on the agenda. Uh, but before we start, the one we're going to talk about first is the uh, uh, events and venues by James. And James is in the audience, but James, if you could please come to the podium first before we start going through this one. I privately talked to you last Tuesday, but I am going to publicly state to you that uh, last Monday night got a little off the track. I handled it very poorly. I was wrong, and I want to pub I publicly want to apologize for my actions last Monday night. Apology Fair? accepted, sir. Very good. All right, now we can begin. Okay. We can begin uh, with uh, number seven on our agenda item. I'll turn it over to our city attorney, Mike Stiff, for some opening comments. Uh, good evening again, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, this item uh, is uh, seeking approval of an ordinance granting a special use permit with respect to certain real property located within the corporate boundaries of Crest Hill, specifically uh, the application of uh, James here. Uh, I think his, this is not cheesecakes by James, this is events and venues by James, is your actual company that's doing this, correct? Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, events and uh, venues by James. Uh, this came through the plan commission. Uh, it came through with a recommendation for approval. You have before you uh, Mora's memo, as discussed in uh, last uh, week's work session, there were six conditions uh, placed upon the recommendation from the Plan Commission. All six of those conditions were agreed to by James uh, at the meeting last week. Um, and you have before you then the ordinance uh, granting the special use permit uh, with respect to the venue. Uh, along with the exhibits being the legal description for the property and the findings and decision of the plan commission uh, with the recommendations uh, for the conditions. Uh, uh, aside from that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Okay, are there any questions of uh, our city attorney, Mike Stiff, in regards to his comments? <coughs> Hearing none, I'll turn it over to James. You can make any comments you would like before city council on what your plans are here for the events um, and venues. Um, just want to say thank you, and um, can't wait to see everybody at the grand opening. Coffee and cheesecake on me. <laughs> um, we can have a council meeting after hours. Um, everyone's invited. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm just going to read the the uh, six conditions that have been written here for the public record. Number one, consumption of alcohol on the property, both inside and outside the building, is prohibited. Number two, review and approval of a security plan by the Crest Hill Police Department. Number three, occupancy of the event space and the area associated with cheesecakes by James shall be limited to a total of 75 people. 
before all events must be completed by 10 p.m. with the closed by 11 p.m. Number five, there shall be no preparation of food on site with the exception of cheesecakes and desserts. All other food may be, may be catered. Number six, at no time shall any door to the outside of the property be propped open. Do you agree with all six of those conditions? Yes, sir. Okay. Any other questions of James? Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against the request of the special use by Mr. James Sankey from Cheesecake, uh, Cheesecakes? Um, Please step to the podium, say your name for the record, and address is optional. Second request, if anyone would like to speak for or against the request of Mr. James Sankey for a special use for the property located at 21113-211121 Division Street, please step to the podium, state your name for the record, and your address is optional. And third request, if anyone would like to speak for or against the special use permit request of Mr. James Sankey on Division Street. Please step to the podium, state your name for the record, address is optional. Let the record show that no one has approached the podium to the City Council. If there are no further questions, you have an ordinance granting a special use permit with respect to certain real properties located within the corporate boundaries of the City of Crest Hill. The application of events and venues by James. Motion would be in order. So move as Second. presented. We have a motion by Alderman Elbert, seconded by Alderwoman Gazal. Questions or comments of the motion? The roll call, please. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Bershay? Yes. Gerald Jefferson? Yes. Cloudy Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Motion carries ordinance 1952. Okay, James, you're all good. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations, James. Welcome to our you. Best of luck, buddy. Okay, next one, Mike. Okay, the next item is also a special use. Uh, I do not see the applicant. Oh, somebody for the applicant is here. Okay. Uh, this is uh, approval of an ordinance for a special use permit with respect to certain real property uh, located within uh, Crest Hill. This is the application of Home Essentials Furniture over in the Hillcrest Shopping Center. Uh, they are seeking a special use, as uh, indicated last week at the work session and in Mora's uh, memo, uh, to allow uh, U-Haul trucks solely for the purposes of uh, people taking delivery of uh, furniture uh, from the location. Uh, this also went through the Planning Commission and uh, came out of the Planning Commission with a recommendation for approval, again with certain conditions. I will read those conditions uh, being uh, three. The prohibition of on-site advertisement of the U-Haul operation, limitation of the total number of trucks to two on-site at any one time, and that all trucks must be parked in the rear of the property, and at no time shall any U-Haul truck associated with the business be located in the front parking lot of the shopping center. Uh, you have uh, a proposed ordinance along with a very lengthy legal description of the entire uh, shopping center, uh, and then the findings and decision of the planning commission also as an exhibit. Uh, aside from that, I'm uh, happy to answer any questions. Any questions of Mike Stepp? Hearing none, a representative from Home Essentials, if you would please to the podium, state your name and anything you would like to add in regards to the uh, special use request. Hello. Thank you for having me. My name is Renee Maltamimi. I am Ibrahim Maltamimi's sister. Um, I am the sales manager at Home Essentials Furniture. So I'm generally on site and um, we do like to keep it minimal with the trucks. We don't market it at all. It does take away from my work at the store so I don't like to use it for anything other than customer use. And um, yeah, I think it'll be pretty easy to follow through with all the ordinances. Okay, any questions of the representative? Okay. I am going to read the three again for public record. Number one, prohibition of on-site advertisement of the U-Haul operation. Number two, limitation of the total number of trucks to two on-site at one time. And number three, all trucks must be parked in the rear of the property 
and at no time shall a U-Haul truck associated with the business be located in the front parking lot of the shopping center. You are in agreement with that? Yes, sir. Okay. Hearing no other questions from City Council, I will ask if there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak for or against the request of Home Essentials Furniture in the Hillcrest Shopping Center located at 1701 North Larkin Avenue, Unit 305, for a special use permit for a large truck rental. Please step to the podium, state your name for the record, address is optional. <coughs> Second time, if anyone would like to speak for or against the request of Home Essentials, in the Hillcrest Shopping Center, 1701 North Larkin Avenue, Unit 305, in regards to a special use permit for a large truck rental. Please step to the podium, state your name for the record, your address is optional. And a third time, if anyone would like to speak for or against a special use request of Home Essentials, please step to the podium, state your name for the record, address is optional. Let the record show that no one has approached the podium. Therefore, City Council, you have before you an ordinance granting a special use permit with respect to certain real property located within the corporate boundaries of the City of Crest Hill, the application of home essentials furniture. So moved. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion by Alder Person Overland, seconded by Alderman Sapiti. Questions or comments of the motion? There's a roll call. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. Mark Sapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubel? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. And John Rache? Yes. Motion carries ordinance 1953. Okay, congratulations. Thank you guys so much. You're welcome. Have a good night. Mabruk. Okay, next one, Mike. Uh, the next item uh, is with respect to uh, the proposed uh, TIF district that will be uh, for the area east of Weber Road between Division and south of Caton Farm Road. Uh, we've been calling it the Division Street TIF. Uh, you have in your packet uh, Maura's memo from the work session along with a draft or a proposed resolution which attaches to it the April 14, 2023 uh, proposal to do the uh, services for uh, Qualification of the TIF, that's from Ryan uh, Inc., which I believe uh, has uh, purchased Kane McKenna, which is the entity that uh, has done previous work for the city with respect to uh, other TIF districts. So uh, the motion would be to approve the resolution approving the engagement letter between the city of Crest Hill and Will County and Ryan LLC for the financial consulting services related to the Division Street Tax Increment Financing District or TIF. Any other questions? Any questions uh, in regards to this agenda item? Okay, again, this was discussed last week also. Um, Council, you have before you a resolution approving an engagement letter between the City of Crest Hill, Will County, Illinois, and Ryan LLC for financial consulting services related to the Division Street Tax Increment Financing District. Motion would be in order. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Gazal, seconded by Alderman Boucher. Questions or comments in regards to the motion? Roll call, please. Nate Albert. Uh, yes. Mayor, don't you have to do your usual spiel, though, about people coming up? Think so? Do I, Mike? No, this is not. No, this is okay. not. This is not. A Very good. I vote yes. Commission. <laughs> Joe Kubal. Yes. Scott Dyke. Yes. John Brache. Yes. Darrell Jefferson. Yes. Claudia Gazal. Yes. Tina Overland. Yes. Mark Sapiti. Yes. Motion carries. Resolution one seven seven eight. Okay. Number ten. Okay. The last. Uh, uh, of these items uh, on my plate are, are is the uh, uh, ordinance to correct a scrivener's error that was in the legal descri description of the Weber Road TIF, which was recently approved by the council. Um, this did not get discussed at the last uh, work session because apparently it was noted sometime between then and now. Um, I got uh, the memo and a phone call from Mora, which I think the memo is in your packet. Uh, I don't even know who determined that there was a scrivener's error in the legal description, but this is an ordinance that was drafted.
drafted by the fifth attorney, Dave Silverman, to correct that scrivener's error in the legal description. So uh, the ordinances that were passed by the council were ordinances 1946, 1947, and 1948, which were uh, passed back on April 3rd of 2023. And apparently the exhibit that was attached to each of those ordinances, which contained the legal description, was in error. Uh, so this is a ordinance uh, that will correct that scrivener's error and direct the city clerk to replace the exhibits from those original ordinances with the corrected legal description, which is attached to this current ordinance. And I'll try to answer any other who, questions. Who was the first I one to come up with the legal description of this property? I'm sorry? Who was the first one to come up with the legal description of this property? That I do not know. <clears throat> I feel like whoever was should be responsible for this. This isn't a new project. This is something we've been working on for years. Not that I'm trying to deflect, but I can tell you that it was not me. <laughs> All right, any other questions? <clears throat> Motion would be in order. So moved. We have a motion by Alderman Jefferson, seconded by Alderperson Oberlin to approve an ordinance correcting a scrivener's error in the legal description of the Weber Road uh, tip. Questions or comments? Roll call. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Bershay? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claude Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zafidi? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Motion carries to ordinance 1954. Okay. Thanks, Mike. Uh, moving on to agenda item number 11. Um, that would be our building commissioner, Don Cena, is over here. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, before you tonight, I have two change orders. Uh, the first one is with Cosgrove Construction uh, for 10 Wi-Fi locks, the 13 window light kits, and the uh, insulation and the executive uh, council or executive council room. Uh, that change order is for $12,915. What a motion would be in order? So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Albert, seconded by Alderman Gazal. Um, to approve a change order with Cosgrove Construction Incorporated for construction work at City Center in the amount of $12,915. This was discussed last week at our work session also. Questions or comments? For roll call. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Bershay? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, the second one we have is with uh, Low Voltage Solutions. This is also uh, for the work with the Wi-Fi locks. This is the uh, wiring and the commissioning uh, for those for the amount of $5,030. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Kubal, seconded by Alderman Bershay to approve a change order with LVS Solutions Incorporated for construction work at City Center in amount of $5,030. Questions or comments? For roll call. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claude Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Zapiti? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Bershay? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any questions of building commissioner? Thanks, Don. Uh, moving on to Police Department, our Police Chief Ed Clark. Good evening, Ed. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Uh, this, the second item I have for the agenda this evening is uh, the retirement of our police canine and our new acquisition of a, a new police canine for our department. Um, as we spoke in the uh, work session last week, uh, Officer McHale has resigned from the department on May 29th. Uh, our initial intent was to retrieve the dog and retrain it. Um, we were offered another alternative uh, by uh, State's Attorney Jim Glasgow, which is, uh, I was informed, was a no uh, cost to the city. He's going to purchase the dog and the training. Um, uh, I have a couple items for you this evening. Uh, first one is the, um, well, the first order uh, is an ordinance that we have to go through and surplus the, uh, the dog as property uh, so that we can um, 
transfer and sell that dog to uh, Mr. McHale for the uh, sum of $1. So moved, Mr. Second. Right, we have a motion by Alder Person, over with seconded by Alderman Elbert to approve an ordinance authorizing dis the disposal of surplus personal property owned by the city of Crest Hill, Will County, Illinois, the retirement of police canine SEMO. Questions or comments? Roll call. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. Mark Speedy? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. Joe Kubel? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. Motion carries ordinance 1955. Thank you. you. You also noticed in your packet that there's a receipt of purchase. I will uh, have that signed by uh, Mr. Bacale and uh, just a, it's a formal transfer of that dog and responsibility to him. So um, I will update you as this progresses as far as the uh, canine is, is concerned. And uh, um, that's all I have this evening. Okay, any questions of uh, police chief? I'm going to do retirement party. Yeah. Yeah, I thought he'd be here. Yeah, he, uh, he he went to the um, tell about the dog or the handler the dog. <laughs> of the dog. Yeah, uh, his handler's busy right now in the state police academy. So, yeah. Okay, thanks, Ed. Thank you. Uh, moving on to mayor's report. Uh, we went through the Italian club already, so the only thing I have is a resolution honoring the Zadralovich family on the 90th anniversary of Marichka's restaurant in the city of Crest Hill. We'll begin with the reading of the resolution by Alderman Dyke. Resolution number 1176, a resolution honoring the Drozolovich family on the 90th anniversary of Marichka's restaurant in the city of Crest Hill, whereas Mary Drozolovich and her son Joseph opened Marichka's restaurant on April 18, 1933 at 604 Theodore Street, in the future city of Crest Hill, Marichka's is the Slovenian translation, translation for Mary, and over the next 25 years, the business began to grow in popularity, and several additions and improvements to the building were, were completed by Joe Javalovich and... <clears throat> Whereas in 1959, longtime loyal employee Rose, Rosie Clentz included and created the world's famous poor boy, garlic, butterina, sandwich, and? Uh, whereas in 1989, the third generation of the Zadralovich family, consisting of Mary K. George and Joe Jr., took ownership of the restaurant and continued the tradition and? Whereas in addition to selling an average of 2,000 poor boys a week, the restaurant is also known for their hand-cut steaks, homemade soups, yodel burgers, double baked potatoes, onion rings, and homemade salad dressing, along with varieties of chicken, fish, and other sandwiches with a seating capacity of approximately 300 customers and? Whereas Marishka's restaurant has operated a successful and profitable business for 90 years in the city of Crest Hill, is the oldest restaurant in Hill County and has employed thousands of Crest Hill residents over the years and has been supportive of community needs and events, thus making the city of Crest Hill a better place to live, I should say and be, and improving the quality of life for all Crest Hill residents and. Whereas the Zadralovich family is now on the fifth generation of business and is owned by Mary Kay George with Joe Zadralovich III and Ryan George as managing partners and whereas generations of families have and continue to enjoy the food and nostalgia of Marishka's restaurant and continue to support the restaurant with their loyalty into the next generations and as a gathering place has, and as a gathering place has formed many new friendships filled with lifelong memories. Now therefore it be a resolve by the mayor and the city council of the city of Crest Hill, Will County, Illinois as follows. Section one, the mayor and the city council of the city of Crest Hill offer their congratulations and gratitude to the Dravovich, Dra and I was just gonna criticize everybody else for butchering the name and I just did it, and Marishka's restaurant on their 90th anniversary of operation. Section two, the mayor and city council of city of Crest Hill extend their best wishes to the Dravovich family and to Marishka's restaurant for productive and successful future. Section three, city of Crest Hill city clerk is directed to forward a copy of this resolution to the Zalovich family and Marishka's restaurant to make the original
material of this resolution available to members of the general public during normal business hours at the City of Crest Hill City Clerk's Office. Resolve this 19th day of June, 2023, Christine Bershay Hall, City Clerk, approve this 19th day of June. Raymond R. Solomon Mayor. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Alderman Dyke, seconded by Alderman Bershay for the approval of the resolution. Questions or comments? Roll call. Tina Overland? Yes. Mark Tabidi? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Bershay? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Clyde Gasol? Yes. Motion carries resolution 1176. Okay, the uh, fifth generation of the business, Joseph Zralovich and Ryan George, were supposed to be here tonight, but unfortunately I got uh, contacted by them uh, this afternoon and they had something come up and they were unable to be here tonight. So we certainly want to recognize Marichka's on their 90th anniversary, five generations in the same family of the Zdralovich family. Um, if you grew up in Crest Hill, you probably worked there. Um, they employed thousands and thousands of Crest Hill young people and also from the surrounding communities. And for it to be operating for 90 years in the same family is a tremendous accomplishment. They are the oldest restaurant in Will County. They've been on several Chicago TV station shows and nationally. And the amazing thing is that when the children move away to other states and they come back to visit at holidays, that's one of their local stops. They always have to get one of the poor boys. So we want to congratulate them on, uh, on being in the city of Crest Hill. We're proud to have them in the city of Crest Hill. And I will certainly deliver this plaque to them later in this week. All right. Just a couple announcements. We talked about the railroad crossing. That is on Oakland Avenue. It is in dire need of some resurfacing over the tracks. So the, the, uh, the tracks will be closed on June 22nd and June 23rd for a two-day project in order for the uh, resurfacing of the railroad tracks. Uh, just uh, the other day on Saturday, on June 17th, I was at uh, 1919 Core Street. Council remembers that was the property that was donated to Habitat by to Humanity. They built the house through a lot of donations and volunteers. Um, there was probably about uh, 50 to 75 individuals that were there Saturday for the ribbon cutting. A veteran, a local veteran, and his family <coughs> is... Uh, are going to be moving into the home. So that is our third Habitat for Humanity house in the city of Crest Hill. We have two on Cora Street and one on the 1900 block of Nicholson Street. So we have a great relationship with Habitat for Humanity and uh, it was great to see a young family that is gonna be able to uh, use that property and use that home and work with Habitat for Humanity. So welcome to the Murdy family um, uh, on uh, the 1900 block of Cora Street. And also, the Saturday before, on June 10th, we were at um, um, Lockport Township Park District um, between Prairie Bluff Golf Course and the fire station, the administrative office for Lockport Township Fire Department for the grand opening of the pickleball courts. They have six beautiful pickleball courts there um, that the park district has put together. They are very, very busy there with the pickleball. And um, this Saturday coming Coming up is the uh, grand opening and ribbon cutting of the new driving range with the simulators that are at the golf course. So the park district is investing a lot of money into the city of Crest Hill, which we're happy to see. And um, uh, we certainly want to thank them for all the resources they're offering now for entertainment, especially for all ages. And I know that pickleball is, is mostly for the older generation, but there's a lot of younger people that are playing pickleball also. Okay, that's it for me. If anybody has any questions, I'll certainly try to answer them. All right, we'll be moving on to our city clerk's report. Our city clerk, Christine Bershay Hall. Thank you. Um, I only have one item on the agenda, and that's um, to approve an ordinance to surplus some items that are no longer needed that are at the old city building for the cable room. Um, you have a list of them, and we'd like to donate them to the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66, which is a 501c organization. 
Council, your approval. So moved is presented. Second. All right, a motion by all the person over and seconded by Alderman Brashe. Second. For an ordinance authorizing the donation or disposal of surplus personal property owned by the city of Crest Hill, Will County, Illinois, the Illinois Rock and Roll Museum on Route 66. Questions or comments? Well, I'd like to say I always appreciate seeing things get reused in our society instead of tossing in a landfill. And um, thanks, Ron, for um, making this happen. Roll call. Claudia Duvall? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Safidi? Yes. Nate Elbert? Yes. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Roche? Yes. And Darrell Jefferson? Yeah. The ordinance number 1956. And we just need to go back to the um, resolution that was passed for the Heritage Corridor. The number should actually be 1177. And the resolution for Bryan LLC should be 1178. And that's all I have to report tonight. Okay, any questions of the clerk? All right, thanks, Chris. Mm -hmm. um, Moving on to our city treasurer's report, our treasurer, Glenn Conklin. Good evening, Glenn. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> uh, just a couple items tonight, but I first want to uh, get you up to speed on something. We had a situation uh, that occurred after last work session. Didn't have an opportunity to contact all of you. Um, we received a whole lot of late water bills this, this billing cycle. Turns out a lot of this was a result of having some trouble with the mail being delivered, letters being delayed getting to getting to us, resulting what would be uh, a lot of late fees and fines associated with uh, the payments coming in late. We had one instance where there was one, I think, uh, postmarked and, and the check dated at the second, which came in at like the 14th. So uh, I was contacted by Regina Cabay in concern for our uh, water customers that would have a, a bill that actually hit our hit us late and whether or not we should um, uh, basically waive the fines for this billing cycle for any late payments that were that were done um, with the inability to contact you people which would normally be my ask for permission I authorized her to waive those late fees we didn't have until this evening because in the process we start the the, the shutoffs tomorrow in any event uh, you know, the, the, the desire was to serve our customers, to eliminate some phone calls your way, to eliminate some phone calls our way. It's not a, a, a matter of trying to get rid of some work. The work is there. Um, but it just uh, seemed unfair to have late fines, fines assessed, angry customers when it was in fact a uh, problem with the post office. Um, Full disclosure, the downside of that is that there are likely some people that mailed in bills late or did not mail them in. Uh, that'll be caught up in the next billing cycle. This will save the process where uh, in between this one and the next one, rather than getting a late notice or having a double bill, uh, those late fees will be waived, the uh, credit will be applied to their account and moving forward will be okay. I'm saying this informally, um, I would have preferred to have the time to come to you guys. We just didn't have it. We made a decision. Um, I'll take any scold in your best best interest. Um, you can beat me up after my report if you choose. Um, next I have is uh, just a report on a regular and overtime payroll from May 22nd, 2023 through June 4th of 2023 and the amount of $261,462.72. I do seek action and request your approval or a motion to approve our list of bills through June 20th of 2023 in the amount of $976,437.28. So moved is presented. Second. My motion by Alder Person, Alderman Second, by Alderman Jefferson for the approval of the list of bills. Questions or comments? Yeah, Glenn, is there a difference between the list of bills that are part of our electronic packet? and the ones that Karen says it sends as an attachment in her email. Are those the same thing? I was trying to put them side by side to compare. Yeah, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. The same thing. Okay, I'm uh, not sure why we're getting them twice, so okay. It, it, <coughs> that is the case and it is the same 
the same file name, the same same information. Great. If there's anything that has a uh, that you'll have a question on, for instance, the description may be a maybe generalized. If there's anything you have a question on, just catch me before noon on Monday, and I have any. Well, yeah, I mean, I think the descriptions on there are, are way too abbreviated, but I've said that in the past, so maybe we can chat off off screen to make that a little bit more detailed on what we're spending some of the bills on. Yeah, anything that you need. There will also be uh, we could have made available to council uh, perhaps a half hour prior to meeting. People choose to be here. Uh, you could go through the the just have the stack that that is for the invoices to get any detail on that. Happy to. Um, next, I would like to turn this over to Lisa Banovitz, our director of finance, for items 21 and 22. We need roll call first. Oh, I'm sorry. Might as well see if we can get that approved first. Go ahead. Mark Sapiti. Yes. Nate Albert. Yes. Joe Kubal. Yes. Scott Dyke. Yes. John Rashid. Yes. Terrell Jefferson. Yes. Claude Gazal. Yes. And Tina Olderman. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. All right, thank you. I'm sorry for messing with that, Chris. Uh, next, I'd like to turn it over to Lisa for the uh, numbers 21 and 22. Oh, good evening, Mayor and Council. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, so the first item that we have is we're looking for a resolution to amend the purchasing policy as it was discussed at the June 12th work session. And again, just to, just to summarize, everything was basically the same. We removed the section on petty cash and then we added some restrictions on the city's credit card usage and how employees were supposed to be using that credit card. So are there any questions about what we discussed at the last work session on the purchasing policy? No? Okay, if not, then I would be looking for, well, Ray, do you want to read the motion or do you want me to read no, it? No, go ahead. Okay, so I would be looking for a resolution then to amend the current purchasing policy. So moved and presented. Yeah, second. Motion by all the person over and seconded by Alderman Jefferson to approve the amendment to the city's current purchasing policy. Questions or comments? Mayor, I just want to uh, voice my uh, uh, objective. Uh, objective. <laughs> I'm off tonight. Um, I, I'll be voting no against this. I, I, I feel like it muddies up the waters when we start intertwining uh, approval by the city treasurer versus the city administrator. Um, therefore, that's why I'm voting against it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Roll call. Nate Elbert? No. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Rache? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. And Mark Sapiti? Yes. Motion carries resolution 1179. Okay, perfect. So then the last item that we have, we talked at the June 12th work session about the Crow contracts. Those were for the inventory for the city. So the first one would be a motion to approve a Kroll property insurance appraisal for the city in use in connection with its internal analysis of its insurance needs and financial reporting as of June 30th, 2023 for 15925 Are there any questions <coughs> regarding this contract? This was the one that is budgeted. This is the one that the sworn members are required to have to basically update their property and their equipment for insurance purposes. So this is required by all the members. Are there any questions related to this contract? No? So then I would be looking for a motion to approve. I can read it again. Let's do it turn. So I would be looking for a motion to approve a Kroll LLC property insurance appraisal for the city's use in connection with its internal analysis of its insurance needs and financial reporting as of June 30th, 2023 for the amount of $15,925,000. And the motion should also include for the mayor Okay, yes. <coughs> so moved and presented. Second. Motion by all the person over and second by Alderman Jefferson for a motion to approve a Kroll LLC property insurance appraisal for the city's use and for the mayor to sign the agreement. Questions or comments? Roll call, please. Joe Kubo? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Brashe? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Petey? Yes. And Nate Elbert? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. And the last item that I have is this is the second contract that we talked about at the work session on June 12th. And this would be for Kroll to provide an inventory of all the equipment on hand and basically look at the capitalization threshold 
and inventory all the items for the city, and then we would be able to account for that on our accounting software. Just enhances internal controls and trash uh, equipment that we're purchasing internally. Are there any questions with this contract? Okay, so I will read this. I'm looking for a motion to approve a Kroll LLC contract to provide updated fixed asset accounting records for internal accounting control and financial reporting as of June 30th, 2023 for the amount of $28,000 in addition to having the mayor sign the contract if it's approved. So move that for that. Second. second. Motion by Alderman Jefferson, seconded by, who was second? Down here? Scott. Alderman Dyke. Questions or comments of the motion? Roll call. Claudia Gazal? Yes. Tina Overland? Yes. Mark Cipede? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. I'm sorry. Yes. Thank you. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Rache? Yes. And Darrell Jefferson? Yes. yes. Motion carries. Thank you. That's all I have for this evening. I'll entertain any questions you may have. I just have a comment. I appreciate your judgment, and um, I thought you made the right decision, so I will not be scolding you. Um, I, I have spoken to our mailman at Newmark. <coughs> um, he, he explains to me how short they are, and uh, I had the mail delivered at my personal house at 9.30 one night, and the mailman had one of those little coal miner lights on, and I was like, They'll come in off the route and they'll send them back in out to do another route or part of a route. So they're out there all hours. So I, I, they got issues too. Yeah, and part of it was the forwarding of our bill mm -hmm. process that people haven't updated mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 I thank you for that. And all I did was incur the judgment on Bob Well, hands off to both of you. Thank you. you. Glenn, just a clarification on that. So is there a clear uh, deadline that you put in place? I mean, if we got a bill tomorrow, are we still waiting the late fee? What's this looking like? I think if they're coming in late, uh, after that, we take a look at that. I don't know if we've got two posts before you, when that gets postmarked, whether it's, you know, initially or when it's, when it's out for delivery. One of the things that we, we, we struggled with was the, was the fact that we have a, by practice and policy, we allow any individual in the six, we go six times within a year, year period. Should they come up with a, with a late payment, we have, we're allowed to waive one time a late payment fee. In the event of this, if somebody were to mail it out on time and got all their stuff, <coughs> and we were to have a, a contested, and we were to waive it in the event that they ran into some other trouble with the mail later, we wouldn't have the ability to do it. But yeah, we will have a cut off and, and uh, um, I think tomorrow might be a good day, but I, I, I wouldn't want to make it as, as bad in the event that we get something So it's just the USPS uh, drop-offs. I mean, if somebody came in today, we're charging them a late fee, or somebody dropped in in the box out there, we're charging them a late fee. It's just the mailed-in okay. payments. Right, so if they're trying to drop-off, that would be... Late fee. I, I guess I'm just a little uh, surprised that we didn't get some type of communication on this uh, email out to all of us. Uh, I, I, again, I agree with Tina. It's a great, great thing, service to the residents, but just a little... Um, little notice would have been would have been nice <clears throat> well my understanding was talked about today so from what mm -hmm. I understood correct it was I didn't realize they they heat on it just due to the fact that our process starts to shut up on on Tuesday there was an email uh, that came to me on Thursday that I didn't respond to until this morning regarding that still didn't give us the ability to uh, address it Do we have to have a resolution or an ordinance to, to support this? I mean, we had to when we rebated the uh, water credit back to customers whenever we um, waive somebody's water bill and all, we have a city council vote on it, I, just for clarification. Uh, this is discretionary that we get to do this that is within the ability of what currently stays is for a, a water bill, water bill <coughs> late fee to be That's, and that's that's written down somewhere. I believe that's both practice and policy. I, 
I know it's practice. I, I just want to clarify. I, my water bill is always late. I, I, I'm supporting the city more by paying the 5% late fee because I always forget to come in and pay for it. So I just want to, I just want to clarify that we're all on the same page here that it's written down and it's policy because we want everything to be policy and, and written down. So going forward, I just want to make sure we're clear with that. If the council, if the uh, majority council's concern, concerns, we can look to expanding the, uh, uh, the way of case practice and the policy. If that's the, if, that's well, the, if it's our fault, yeah, but if it's, if it's the post office fault, we can't regulate them. So. And they're not forwarding the mail on here, they're sending it back to the residents. And and then there was a sign over at the old city hall that had our address on it, but that had Joliet, Illinois, that the post office had put on there. So our residents were walking, and they were incorrectly mailing it to Joliet, Illinois. And they said, did you move to Joliet? So there's, there's been a lot of problems with the post office, and that's why we didn't think that the residents should suffer for that, just because it's in conjunction with the move. Yeah, and I agree 100%, but I'm saying that it should still been communicated to us before tonight. Thanks, Glenn. And I do, that's sincere. I, I should have a letter of this. <clears throat> okay, thanks, Glenn. Uh, unfinished business. We have nothing on the agenda. Anyone? New business? Committee? Uh, yes, Mayor. Uh, to step back and ask the Chief on something with the 4th of July coming up and you know issues we've had with fireworks and that before, do you feel we should have a work session? next Monday to discuss it or what would you like to discuss I don't know is there any you know new procedure anything you know going forward that we can be able to better handle it this year <coughs> to better well what we're doing right now currently is we're, we're going to hire uh, additional officers for the street uh, we're going through the overtime list as we as we speak if we have an issue with that I will definitely uh, I'll let you guys know but yeah we're going to try and do uh, as we have in years past special enforcement on fireworks. All right, thank you. Thank you. And Chief, on that note, I've had a couple of calls because um, one of the residents over in the, I think it's, uh, what is it called, Arbor Glen or something like that? Yeah, they like to start their fireworks like around 11, 12 p.m. <laughs> so some of the residents are calling and complaining uh, okay. that they're not getting an answer from the police and they call. They're not getting an answer from the police? Right. Okay, well, I'm, I'm sure that they respond to it, um, and I, I'd have to see if they, if they wanted to be contacted by the police. Did the officer check the area? A lot of calls come in and say, can we just have an officer check the area? Certainly, and they'll check the area, and nine times out of ten, those fireworks issues are gone by the time they do check the area. Um, but uh, one thing I, I encourage the residents to do is, if, if it's a complaint, to please say, I'd like to speak to an officer regarding this complaint. And that, that will uh, alert that officer that they have to stop by the house and, and actually talk to that person. It's the same thing a lot of times with loud noise complaints. There's a lot of, it's a lot of noise complaint, but they don't want to be talk, you know, seen or talked to the officer. The officer can't be alarmed and disturbed by that matter. Uh, only the resident can be. And we'll need them to sign that complaint when that happens. Oh, I'll forward that information. Thank you. Thank Unfortunately, you. It's, they know the system, they know how to play it, and you see fireworks, that doesn't mean it's coming from certain houses. It might be a couple, you know, blocks down. Yes. And we've been through that. And Arbor Glen, yeah, they are smart yes. about that. And they love their fireworks, but they know how to play the system. By the time the police come, because they have other things, they're also trying to take oh, yeah. care of not just fireworks. By the time they get there, it's, it's done. So yeah, they wait till the police leave, and then they start again. I, from personal we played experience, that game the last couple of years with them. So Yeah, from personal experience, I've been at, at residence and, and actually writing a citation for it, and you can hear them going off down the street, and they're mad at me, like, why well, can't you go down there and write them? Well, I'm only one person, and I'm doing it as, as many as I can, you know. So, uh, yeah, it, it is hard to, hard to control that. But um, that, that's our goal is to have that extra detail like we hasn't had in years past, and uh, I'll let you know the results of that detail. Thank you. Can we uh, post this on social media? Does that remind us? Oh, absolutely. Yes. Thank you. 
Okay, committee liaison reports, anybody? City Council comments? We'll begin with Alderman Kubal tonight. Start with me, right? Yeah, <laughs> nothing to add at this time. Alderman Albert? Yeah, one last plug for uh, uh, Mark Seifer. Wish you the best of luck, Mark. Uh, your new employer is getting a, a good guy, and I wish you the best of success for you and your family. Alderman Spitty? Uh, nothing tonight. Alderperson Oberlin? Yes, I, um, <clears throat> I want to give some thanks. Our annual Ladice ceremony this year, although we did get rained out tragically, we moved it at the last minute to this building, and we had a huge crowd. This, we used both rooms, it was packed. So I want to thank um, Blaine and Mark and everyone in Public Works for their quick ability to switch the party over to this room and set everything up here. It was much appreciated by the Czech Consulate and um, certainly by myself. And I want to thank all the people who showed up. And we had many people off the council. Scott and Linda were there, and Claudia was there, and the mayor, of course, and Nate was there, and Glenn was there, and Lisa was there, and the chief was there. Um, and oh, let me not forget, our city attorney sh was there as well. So I thought that was very nice that they showed up um, to see this ceremony. It was a very solemn event, and um, as always, it was a very, very nice day and a nice tribute. And I also want to uh, thank uh, Glenn and Claudia for helping me set up at the last minute over at City Hall, too, because it was kind of crazy switching everything over. So thank you. I do appreciate your help. That was much appreciated, and your help uh, getting it out on social media so people knew. And we had a, some poor man sitting in the rain over there at the time, <laughs> directing everybody over here. So um, uh, it was a nice day, and I thank everyone. Um, June 19th is a special day now, and it's, an, it, it's special for a lot of reasons, and we celebrate it for a good reason for our, our, our whole world, for uh, the Emancipation Day. And um, no one has said anything yet, but I'm going to say anything. I hope everybody understands what it, it stands for and supports what it stands for. and. Um, a little sadly for me personally, it's also my deceased mother's, would have been her 90th birthday today. And um, I lost her when I had just turned six. So um, I'm having a very hard time imagining what my lovely mother would look like today at 90. But she was a very wonderful woman and I treasure the six years I had with her. And happy birthday, June Bug. Love you, thank you. Alderwoman Gazal. Um, last Wednesday, um, we hosted the, um, meet at the park with, um, touch up truck as well. Um, all right, I'm not going to get emotional. So what I had this, uh, goal of mine, I, uh, talked to, um, our chief and he was a big supportive. Um, the first time we started was like a little tiny table, a folding tiny table. And um, two, two trucks that uh, Mr. Seifer brought, and every year started to grow more and more and more. And uh, Mark brought up so much ideas, and now we have two tents. We have table covers. We are so professional, and um, this year was like hugely amazing, big. We couldn't keep up. I can't thank you enough, Heidi. <laughs> You, uh, you are gifted for this. You, you have this connection with kids. I've been saying this um, over and over. Uh, I can't thank you enough for your dedication uh, with what you do with um, community outreach. Chief, thank you for continuing the support. I know it's been, especially this year, it's been hard because the short staff and, and Mark, I know you started this with me and I was hoping to see you last Wednesday. But I know you trained Blaine very well, and Blaine did an amazing job in all public works. I wanna, if you can thank them for me. I mean, I thank them individually, but um, coming from you, they will feel that, you know, you backed them up and they're shining because of you. So I appreciate, I appreciate that. I appreciate all the resin that came out. I wanna thank also um, Nico's Catering for, um, 
we hosted the handouts from them this year. So I want to thank them uh, for their support and for the good price that they gave us um, on the hot dogs. And that's pretty much, I wanna thank everyone, Mr. Treasure, for, um, for helping me um, with some of the cost of the uh, handout to the kids. And we appreciate that greatly. And to everyone, so that's pretty much. So if I'm using overtime, I apologize, but this is community outreach and um, it's must needed. It brings, it brings families together, it brings our city together. And because um, my heart does hurt for what's happening to our city right now. And if we can bring a little happiness right now to, um, to the resident, it's, uh, it's a must. Thank you. Alderman Jefferson. I'm not gonna take up much time. I just wanna say happy Juneteenth Day to everyone that supports it. Uh, if you don't understand it, I suggest, I just ask that you read up about it and understand the meaning of it and what it means to a great deal of people. Um, I just wanna wish you good luck and happiness in your endeavors, Mark. Uh, it's been a pleasure working with you. Uh, and uh, I know you're gonna do well. Alderman Vershay? Uh, nothing at this time. Alderman Dyke? I just want to thank Tina and all those that helped along with that, with this monument, with the ceremony that was here. It was a real nice ceremony, and I could see there was a lot of work and involvement, and all those that helped public works and everything else. I want to thank all of them. And just a thought that I had that maybe council, we should think of maybe moving the monument to the park next door to City Hall here. Maybe it'll better serve for future ceremonies and we could name that park with these park in honor of that so just a thought maybe we can go forward with that so maybe a future work session on that thank you okay public comment anyone like to address city council please step to the podium state your name for the record address is optional let the record show that no one has approached the podium mike is there uh, is there a need for an executive session? I'm not sure. I think that this is on just in case. I don't think Correct. that there would be a need. Motion to adjourn, Mayor. Oh, one second, one second. Um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that we need to discuss about how we're moving the city and we're hiring and stuff. I mean, what we're waiting for? Can we go into the executive session and discuss that? Or I agree. I make a motion. I mean, it's time to session. figure out what we where we stand as the city. I mean, and we can't talk about it in public, and do we need another work session that's gonna have 20 items on it? Well, the, the executive session that is on the agenda is for 122C1, so if there's a motion, we can go into executive session and discuss the hiring and the specific- I support. second that motion. Excuse me, we need to have Scott draw his adjournment first. Uh, I'll withdraw my adjournment. Oh, and secretary, or second mayor. All right, we have a motion by Alderman Alder, seconded by Alderman Gazal to go into executive session. Roll call. Um, Tina Oberlin? Yes. Mark Petey? Yes. Nate Albert? Yes. Joe Kubal? Yes. Scott Dyke? Yes. John Rache? Yes. Darrell Jefferson? Yes. Clyde Gazal? Yes. Motion carries. All right, we'll be going into executive session at 8.24 p.m.